are in a business that nobody wants to live next to, but everybody needs. People often have an image in their mind of landfills as they existed 30 years ago. Landfills used to be located where they shouldn't be, uh, in wetlands, on the shore of rivers and streams. Landfills used to be built without any liners at all. And the water that came uh, through the landfill would go out the bottom of the landfill into the environment. That doesn't happen anymore. Today's landfills are state-of-the-art facilities where construction, operation, oversight, and inspection by third parties and state regulators make them some of the most secure and environmentally safe disposal sites in the country. Juniper Ridge Landfill in Old Town is one of those facilities. Owned by the state of Maine and operated by Casella Way Systems, Juniper Ridge serves customers in every county of the state. The landfill is located in an optimal geological area and consists of a number of cells, each measuring up to eight acres. Accepted waste streams include combustion ash, construction and demolition debris, waste treatment sludge, and some contaminated soils. The design provides for redundant safety measures that include a four-foot liner and piping systems to ensure environmental safety. It's a secure facility where that we protect the environment from any of the what we call leachate, which would be any of the water that hits the waste and that goes down through the waste, is protected with a liner in such a way that it cannot get to the original ground. The site is located so it is monitorable, we understand where the groundwater is going, it has good soils underneath it, and from that we've put in a, a world-class liner system that meets all the industry standards. We use materials that are a little bit thicker than what's normally used in these systems, and that's just, again, providing a little bit of redundancy in the system, makes it a little bit more robust. Technologically advanced construction materials and special equipment are used to build the cells, which require various layers of materials to be placed with precise measurement. We use EPS equipment which allows us to put all these layers to grade the specified thickness without using any type of mechanical uh, staking system. It helps protect the liner. We don't have to drive in grade states. In the cab, the operators have actual a model of the, the landfill within the cab so they can put everything right to grade. The tolerances are extremely tight with the GPS equipment. The liner system is key to providing a safe, reliable area for waste disposal. The first layer was a layer of uh, non-woven fabric which has to be sewn together over the entire eight acres across the floor of the cell. Then there is a one foot sand layer which was approximately 12, 000, 12 to 13,000 cubic yards which is placed. And then within that sand layer there's a network of under drain piping. There's all gravity flow to the south end. And over the sand is a 24 inch clay borrow layer has to be placed in one foot lifts and that material is tested very stringently. Samples are collected from the clay layer as it's being placed to make sure it's compacted properly and has the right moisture content to ensure the lowest possible permeability. Then a special geosynthetic clay liner is placed over the clay. Between the two non-geotextile layers is bentonite powder that, when hydrated from the moisture of the clay below it over time, turns to a paste-like consistency, creating a seal over the clay layer. Over that, an 80 mil geomembrane is placed and heat fused together. The tests are taken of every single seam. There's actually a, a zone in each seam where they actually blow up and make sure there is no type of leaks in the seam. In certain areas, seams are cut out and sent off to the laboratory and tested again to make sure they have the proper strength. Next, a thin plastic grid covered with non-woven geotextile fabric is placed. It contains two directional flow channels to allow a drainage path for leachate from the waste. It's then evacuated by the pump system to a pump station and onto a storage tank, where it's then trucked to an approved treatment facility. A foot layer of leachate composite sand is then placed to complete the cell. From start to finish, testing is done every step of the way to ensure the system is secure. We want to make sure that we have achieved the density we need as we build our way up. That includes the base grades, the underdrain sand is also checked for density to make sure that it will support the clay. The clay density is checked to make sure it will support the liner. And once we get to that point, nothing else gets added, so we don't need to, but we've already established that we have stable footing below the landfill itself. Anything that's manufactured, such as a liner, the geosynthetic clay liner, and also the soils materials are all tested prior to being brought on site to show they meet the project specifications. Once they're tested and they're, and they're approved by us as meeting the, the intent and design of the cell, they are brought on site, they are installed, and then they are tested again. 
Once the cell is completed, a third party conducts a leak survey using electrical probes that can detect a hole as small as a pin. If any are located, that area of liner is dug up and repaired before any waste is placed in the cell. An initial five-foot soft layer of waste is placed on the cell floor, and a methane gas extraction system is installed to help control odor. Every 40 feet of elevation, we put in horizontal piping, which is perforated pipe, and that's tied in with a vacuum line that pulls the gas off of that layer, off of that cell, and pulls it to the flare. We have 127 wells, and we have a technician that goes around every two weeks, and they have to walk the entire landfill, and they have to sample each well and make any adjustments to that well, and then all that data is sent to the state and is kept track of by the engineers. In addition to burning off methane gas in the flare, deodorizers are dispensed in active cells. Trucks carrying odiferous materials are sprayed entering and exiting the landfill, and a high-density polyethylene cap is placed over the cell when it reaches capacity. It acts as a barrier, it's like putting a, a wrapper over the top to eliminate the possibility that those gases can just drift off. And then combining that with the vacuum, it keeps everything trapped inside and then sent toward the flare where it is dealt with so that they know where the gases are going. They're not just free flowing from the site. Water testing is also a high priority at Juniper Ridge. We have a third party engineering Point company nine. that goes around every quarter. We have numerous wells around the facility. They'll come on, sometimes it will take them two days to go around the facility, collect water out of those wells, and those are sent away for analyzing. The combination of redundant systems, testing, and continual monitoring puts Juniper Ridge in the top tier of landfills when it comes to safety and responsible operation. Casella was interested in going that extra mile to ensure the public that everything possible was being done to protect the environment and to collect and make sure there was no defects in the system as it was installed. It was really a commitment by the company to, to go that extra mile. This is the seventh cell that I've been involved with at this facility. I've also worked at other landfills in, in Maine and in other parts of the country. And this cell is as good as any cell I've ever been involved with. It doesn't get any better as far as the different layers and the different control measures from the under drain and the groundwater monitoring to the leachate collection and gas collection all the way up through. It's very regulated, it's monitored, it's very safe. Efforts to educate the public about Juniper Ridge include tours of the site. Neighbors, community and state leaders can see firsthand how the facility was built and operates and attitudes are changing one by one. We have had people that have said after seeing how the liner is built and the care that's taken in that, that they have no concerns about water quality and their impression has really been changed. We're going to strive every day to make sure that we leave this place from an environment perspective as good as we found it. I foresee this facility to be here for the next 25 plus years and to continue to do what we're doing every day work at trying to make it better.